Welcome back, Fight Fans. We're here for yet another week of Shooting the Shit Podcast here on the Loudmouth MMA Podcast Network, as well as Combat Press and everywhere else the show streams. I'm your host, Riley Contek, here as usual uh, for another week of fights and another great fight guest we have on the show. Before I introduce her, though, of course, let me get to our sponsor first. Uh, I know we have a large contingency in the state of Illinois, so if you're looking for any indoor uh, home redecorating, home uh, construction projects, head over to Facebook right now to Cornelius & Sons. Get a hold of Raul. Uh, like I said, he'll take care of anything, plumbing, kitchen, bathroom, flooring, drywall, anything you need. Uh, again, that is Cornelius LLC on Facebook.com. Uh, so again, like I said, we have another great guest this week on the show. Uh, she's an Invicta veteran. She's currently under contract with Bellator. Uh, she is uh, flyweight. Well, she's been in multiple weight classes, but she's most recently been at flyweight. Uh, Deanna Bennett is on the show today. Deanna, how are you today? I'm great. Thanks for having me. No it's problem. Good to- <laughs> Awesome. And, uh, you know, thanks for coming on. Like we said, without the fighters, the show is impossible. So first things first, uh, how was your Thanksgiving? Um, you know, it's been a weird Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, this Thanksgiving was probably not the best. I literally didn't leave my apartment. I couldn't fly because I just had surgery uh, about a month ago. And my sister was supposed to come up from, uh, she lives at Fort Bragg in North Carolina, in the Army, and was supposed to come up and spend it with me. And because of COVID, she can't leave the base or like 50 miles from around it. Mm -hmm. So she wasn't able to. So I basically cooked food by myself and uh, did nothing, which actually wasn't too bad. Um, But it was was different. I I like family gatherings. I like being together with people. So not having that was a little weird, but then I could like Winnie the Pooh it and not have to wear pants all day and just eat whatever I wanted. So, I mean, can't really complain with that. Yeah, I agree. I think that Thanksgiving with no pants sounds like thanks it's better than Thanksgiving with family. I, I think we can all agree on that. No um, judgment. Ex- Don't judge. Exactly. If I do that at a family party, they judge me for not wearing pants. So definitely with you Same. on that one. Uh, so did you cook the whole the whole nine yards, the turkey and all that good stuff? I went for a Cornish game hen because it look, you know, it's a, it's a bird. So it's just a smaller scale. So I didn't want to eat turkey for basically like the entire month if I cooked a real turkey by myself. So I went smaller scale and it was perfect. Yeah, I'm sure that worked out well, especially like you said, with one person, that's actually probably perfect portioning right there. Did you have any leftovers with that even or no? I did. Um, being that I'm laid up for the time being, I actually um, had half that day and then half the next day, and it worked perfectly. So. Perfect. Now, um, you know, we're going to talk about your most recent fight. Um, you know, one of the things that we have in common, obviously, is we're both laid up with injury right now, so we're, we're able to commiserate here. Uh, before we talk about the injury and, and that, uh, let's just talk about the fight itself. So you made uh, your last fight uh, at, in Bellator. You took on Liz Carmouche. So uh, in take Taking a look at that fight, you know, Liz is top five probably in the world at 125. Um, you know, obviously you didn't you didn't take the victory, um, but how would you rate your fight either way, and what would you have done differently uh, to, to change the outcome of that fight? Um, you know, it was, a, it was a great experience, and I would fight her again any day of the week. She's an awesome competitor. Like you said, she's one of the, the top in the world. The fact that the UFC let her go is just ridiculous. Uh, just because she is such a great athlete and she is such a great fighter. Um, you know, I, I had the problem. I didn't, wasn't on weight and that was, I had some hormone stuff going on that I was able to get fixed. And, um, so there was that, I would definitely do that differently because right. I don't want to be that fighter that doesn't make weight for a fight. And it was frustrating being my first fight and doing everything I can and then still not being able to make it on there. Um, as for the fight itself, you know, I, I felt great in that fight. You know, I, I've been working my butt off, literally, I have my butt, to, uh, um, to be in there and just day after day after day putting in the work. I, I know that I can compete with the top that are out there. And it just sucks because, and the reason that I have my nice little brace and had to have surgery because is it just busted open. Oh. That's why it's too much Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, careful. <laughs> yeah. Oops. <laughs> let me let me not get so excited for a second. Uh, <laughs> wow. That's embarrassing. It's like the button popping off your jeans. That's uh, exactly. I think people that was, understand. Just, <laughs> 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 oh, 
wasn't talking about making weight or anything. <laughs> Good timing. Good timing, Brace. Right. Um, yeah. I, uh, the third round of the fight, I was, had my back against the cage. I was going for a, uh, a hip switch, and I went and did the motion for the hip switch, and that's I felt a sharp pain. In, it felt like my hip. I didn't know what it was. I just knew there was something in my hip that there was a problem. And if you watch the fight, you can see the moment my face is like, oh, no. And I stopped completely. I couldn't move because something happened in my leg. I didn't know what happened, but I knew something happened. And that's when she jumped on my back. And that's when I subsequently got choked. So, you know, I would change that part again. <laughs> I mean, not getting injured, but it just sucks. I know it sounds like, oh, I got injured and that's why I lost. You know, she was able to capitalize on a moment where I stopped and that's because she's a great opponent. Um, for me, even being hurt, I wish I wouldn't have just, I not that I could move, but I've been replaying that, like, what if I would have tried to try and move or just random stuff, but I, I physically couldn't, my hip wouldn't move, and turns out that I had a, um, a hamstring avulsion, so that moment where I was like, Ooh, what just happened, was my hamstring tore about 95% off of the bone, um, so up where my, on the pelvis, that's where it ripped off, and didn't know that that's what it was, because there was no, usually, like, you get something like that, and it, you have bruising, because it bleeds profusely, but not me. I'm special in the fact that it just basically collected into a giant hematoma underneath the skin, mm. and they didn't know until they did an MRI like almost a month later. Oh wow! So I was just trying, yeah, because I was like, okay, it's not bad. I can kind of walk around. Obviously, it's uncomfortable. I was doing PT, and then it started hurting really badly again. So they're like, we need a second opinion. So we went in for got the MRI, and they're like. Yeah, no, it's almost turn off the bone, and you have a giant hematoma in your leg, basically like a water balloon full of blood, just like sitting under there. So I'm like, that would be why it didn't bleed. Didn't think it was that severe because it didn't bruise at all. But uh, no, no, I go big or go home, and then that's what brings me to where I'm at there. And it just sucks because I I felt so good in that cage. You know, I've been working so hard. I have been wanting to fight for Bellator for a long time. Like if you've seen, I've talked about it before. You know, they come from, they're, they have a lot of their fights there in San Jose, California, and that's basically where, I'm from Fremont, just outside mm -hmm. of it, my dad was a San Jose cop, like, I, when they are able to have fights in California again, like, I want to fight at the SAP in the center, that's like my favorite place on the planet, um, super excited to be with them, and so I can't wait to heal this leg so I can get back there, because give me two more minutes in that fight and I would have won that fight. So, and that's not just me saying that. I, I didn't think that I won the first round, but apparently on the scorecards I did. Mm. So if I would have made it two more minutes, I actually would have won. So. Yeah, that's that. unfortunate, unfortunate timing, <laughs> obviously, uh, and unfortunate injury because no injuries are fun. But um, so uh, now I tore my Achilles tendon. So that's what I'm laid up with right now. Yeah, not a great injury to have either. Um, now you said that you had a sharp pain. Um, did you hear like a big popping noise? Like, cause I can tell you when I tore mine, I heard it and then I had this sudden rush and then the pain kind of just went away. Like after like a couple seconds, um, I, I don't know. Did you have a similar experience with a, with a popping sound? Yeah, I, I didn't quite hear it. I felt, I felt it. And I was like, Ooh, that, that was abnormal. Like, that was weird. That was a kind of a pain. Like, I felt the pop, and then I had so much adrenaline that I was like, I wasn't really in pain, but my body wouldn't move, and so I didn't know. Actually, it's a weird, because I've, I've torn my MCL before. I had a grade three tear in my MCL way back when, before I fought Juliana Pena, uh, back in Utah yeah. a long time ago. Um, I remember that distinct pop when I did that injury. It, it had the same feeling for when I did this one. So like I was, I was familiar with it and like, I know something's wrong. I don't know exactly what, but it was the same type of sensation. Oh, okay. For sure. Yeah. So yeah. And it also, you were probably, you know, in, you know, a setting or, you know, where you're not going to be hearing that because you're also occupied with fighting. There's other noises where you're at. Yeah. So that could definitely, mine happened in the gym. It was relatively quiet. So that's possibly why. 
Um, now, in terms of that injury, obviously you're recouping it. How has physical therapy been going for you? And and the second thing I'm going to ask you, because I don't know if this is just exclusive, but you know, now that you're not as active because you're not burning a lot of calories, do you find that you're not really having an appetite as much, especially in the aftermath of I don't know having surgery? Um, I rehab's going good. I just finished it's Jag one and Eaton town is where I'm doing it. And they've been super great to me. Um, you know, the first, I'm not going to lie. I've had a lot of injuries through, I've played hockey my whole life, like through fighting. I've had a lot of injuries. I do not recommend this one. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Don't recommend. Yeah. Don't do it at all. Uh, not like you really have a choice, but right. <laughs> it's miserable. I knew it was going to be bad too. Cause I was meeting with the surgeon. He's like, listen, I'm going to be frank with you. It's basically like torture. I'm like, okay, sign me up. Like, mm-hmm. cool. But I- I'm glad he did. Cause he, he prepped me for it. He's like, it's going to be miserable. It's going to be terrible. It's one of the most awful things that you can do. And I'm like, okay, listening, getting more afraid. Somebody have any tequila to eat my <laughs> tension right now like hmm, about that and like I said he wasn't lying it, it's been miserable and I I'm it'll be five weeks as of uh, in two days and I <laughs> was absolutely miserable for the first few weeks I couldn't move couldn't do anything mm-hmm. couldn't drive couldn't I was just basically stuck in my little apartment and just it was awful And I finally got to start going to PT. Actually, my birthday was the first day that I went to PT. So happy birthday. Thanks, my surgeon. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And it was, it was not good. And then I hit a point last week where I actually, I, I'm, today is my first day off of crutches completely. Very good. I'm bipedal again. Not (laughs) relaxed. Biped. I don't know. I try, I try. (laughs) Evolving. It's perfect. And uh, I still have, obviously, this horrible brace that apparently mm-hmm. is like a girdle, and it's not doing a good job of keeping that in, yeah. which leads me to the next part. Um, I, I wasn't really eating a lot for the first little bit, which is good because I couldn't get up anyways. Right. And I was alone in my apartment just because with COVID and then with everything going on and my family, I got the surgery in Jersey, and most of my family is all over the place in Utah and a lot of places like I was basically alone, so I I prepped everything. I made a whole bunch of food. I had everything there, so I didn't have to move too much. And so, thankfully, I wasn't quite that hungry, so I didn't have to get up too often. Or if I did, it was within arm's length. But, like, I've been doing what I can to stay active and not turn into, like, the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. (laughs) Everyone always was like, oh, how are you doing? Like, you're doing okay? And I would just send them pictures of the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I just took this photo of me. I'm doing great. They're like, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. I'm like, I don't know. Y'all left me alone in my apartment, so right. you can get. So, so, so how, how have you coped with the injury and really not being able to do a lot? Because obviously I was in the same situation as you. I just recently stopped walking with this, started walking with assistance in a boot. Uh, how, how have you coped uh, through the whole process of, you know, b- being lonely, not being able to really do much, you know, that isolation? How do you how do you deal with that? Uh, Painkillers and tequila. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't ever mix those. Uh, That's no. just a joke. <laughs> That's my story and I'm sticking with it. It's just a joke. Um, you know, thank goodness for Skype and thank goodness for my computer because <laughs> It, it not, I hit some rough points. Like I like, I'm an active person. Mm-hmm. I don't like sitting down. I don't like doing nothing. Like I like doing a lot of things. Like I, before COVID, like I was working a full-time job and I was training and doing everything because I, I like to have that. And I never thought that I was a social person. And that's one of the things that I learned during this pandemic is that I'm actually a social person. So add in the injury with that. And I'm like, I'm, I'm losing my mind. Like I'm talking to myself in full sentence, like full sentences, full conversations, just trying to keep saying, since like I read every book possible. I, I am actually an art school dropout. So I did little art projects and like worked on my little doodles and like started writing short stories because what else am I gonna do? Yeah. Um, I've watched everything known to mankind and it's like 
like literally guys somebody entertain me because i'm losing my mind and my friend she actually she got sick she thought she had covid but she didn't she was just sick and she's like deanna i was out for like a week and i missed a couple workouts and i was just like trapped in my apartment and it was so depressing and i was like <laughs> oh, was it depressing tell me more how, like, ver- how very <laughs> short-sighted how very <laughs> short-sighted of her would saying that to you right yeah she's like i'm not trying to say it's the same but like i'm like so i just gave her the stare like yeah that's like that's like somebody that's like somebody (laughs) bitching about their job to somebody who's unemployed you know (laughs) it's just so exactly you're just like huh well tell me more tell tell me more about your experiences (laughs) yeah i know the big thing because I'm a lot like you. I like to stay active. I like to stay busy. You know, before I got hurt, I was going to Muay Thai practice twice a day and going to the gym to lift weights, you know, and now that's gone. And then, you know, for whatever it was, four to six weeks, I wasn't even able to go lift weights because I was afraid of popping a staple or, or yep. accidentally losing my balance. Um, and now that I at least have the, you know, going to the gym to lift weights back, that's definitely been helpful wow. because like you said before, you're just sitting on the couch looking for things to do and there's just really not a whole lot you can Oh yeah. No, in my apartment, I have, I got myself like a pull-up bar. I got a couple kettlebells. I have like a steel mace. I have a bunch of bands. Like if you walk into my apartment, it's just like this random little mix. I got one of those exercise balls that I can try and do some stuff onto. And then like, I will do anything that I can. Cause I'm used to getting up. Like I still, my body's just trained to get up at six 30 in the morning. Cause that's what I did. I used to get up and go for my morning cardio immediately at 6.30. And so I'm like, I'm still on that schedule. I got one of those little arm bicycle things that are like ridiculous, but I'm sitting like in my bed doing it. My friend came over and took a photo and sent it to my coach. Like this cycle path won't stop. And I'm like, did you think I was going to like, (laughs) y'all have known me forever. Like you should know by now I'm not going to. And and so I'm like, well, just so you know, like I'm working my upper body. So I plan on like crushing people with it. So you want to make fun of me, see how it feels when I'm back in the gym and I'm using that. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna, I was saying that I'm going to look like one of those guys from the Jersey Shore because they all have chicken legs and big <laughs> upper bodies. <laughs> if you can only do upper body. That's the that's... one. <laughs> I was say, well, I am in Jersey right now. So it's file suit for whatever I am. So there we go. <laughs> yeah, you probably... nice. You're going to start fitting Jack in. arms. Yeah. Like every female always wants big arms, big neck. Like that's what I'm going for. I'm in Jersey, so I got to do that, right? Yeah, there's 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 it. nothing more attractive than a woman with a gigantic neck. There's that's it's, it's got to be true in our sarc- not sarcasm. Right oh, 100%. <laughs> like, that's why I get all the boys. Oh, wait. That's how I <laughs> all of them that's right uh, <laughs> so the one last thing we'll talk about post the Carmouche fight before we talk about the UFC main event this weekend um you know something that you know there had been an article out I believe it was on MMA fighting where you had talked about uh after the Carmouche fight getting a lot of uh, online trolling uh people saying some pretty nasty things to you um you know so you know I, I believe I read in the article that you think there should be more monitoring and policing of people in terms of the you know the content that they send to people like you um, and then you have the question of online censorship. Uh, you know, we shouldn't be censoring people, um, you know, trying to use their free expression online. So, I mean, where do you draw the line on censorship and, and policing on, uh, online? Uh, what do you think is acceptable or maybe not acceptable, but what's completely unacceptable on those social media platforms, do you think? It, it's, a, it's a hard one. You know, I you saw with the article, I was getting somebody who was messaging me. Like, I've always gotten, since I've started fighting, I've gotten people that will message me like, oh, this is the ugliest chick I've ever met in my life. Oh, she looks like a dude. And I'm like, listen, blame my parents because they made it and I just don't make enough money to fix it. And two, yeah, sometimes after fights, I look a little rough. I always agree with them. Like, this is not my best photo at all. And so I've always gotten it. And I'm always like, it makes me laugh because I'll usually just agree with it and then they'll delete it. They're like, Oh my goodness, Deanna, I'm so sorry. And I was like, no, no, I legitimately was actually agreeing with you. So <laughs> like simple stuff like that. I'm like, whatever, people are just going to be jerks and do that. But this guy, like he, I would just like, okay, whatever it is, what it is. But he just kept on messaging me and was like, you should go home and die. Like you don't deserve to be there. You're awful. You should go kill yourself. Like, 
off the rails of that stuff and I'm like, okay, listen. That when we come to like, you should kill yourself yeah. or go home and die, that's where I have an issue. Like, I personally, I'm okay. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, he said I should go and die. I should go do that now. Like, whatever. Like, did it sting? I was like, wow, that's excessive. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, okay. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, didn't, I missed weight my fight. Like, hmm, next step, kill myself. Like, Okay, I'm not sure where we get to that point. Yeah, that's a little extreme. I, yeah, that's kind of where I was at. I was like, I think we're missing a few steps. I feel like that shouldn't be in this uh, equation, but whatever it is, what it is. But I'm like, that right there, I'm like, okay, excessive. And what kills me, though, and where it came up with was that I follow a page called You Look Like a Man, which is basically, it's a page where all, like, female athletes or anybody – they get sent these terrible messages and they get sent. And so this page literally just reposts the stuff. Like doesn't say anything, just reposts the stuff. And that page actually was getting censored for, for bullying. So a guy can go and tell me that I should go kill myself, but her literally just reposting what other guys sent or said to females get shut down and so it was just it's the double standard like i'm not saying like oh we need a censor no women should be able to say what they want mm -hmm. but i'm just asking for consistency because why do guys get to say terrible things to females but a female wants to stand up for herself and call them out for that and that's bullying yeah. i was meet somebody telling me that i should kill myself not bullying and the dude actually changed his entire page on Instagram. It was a picture of me getting choked out. The bio was saying my my fighting record and how I suck because of my fighting record. And that ten that my, wins is bad, I guess. Yeah, apparently. And like, <laughs> let's count the, the exhibitions in there too. And that's three True. more on top of that. So it's like, all right, well that that's cool. And then there's some sketchy decisions, but we won't get into that all one. Right. Um. But I'm like, okay, cool. Like the whole page, he changed it to be about me. And, and that's not harassment. Like yeah. calling you missed weight fatty. Like that's not harassment. But it's if, so like, childish. Right? I was just like, <laughs> sir, like I am flattered that you think so much about me. Like, I don't mean to I laugh, but it's so childish. No, but it's, it, just, it's, it is. It's actually I laugh too. <laughs> no, no, I trust me. I laughed about it because I was just like, "Huh, like somebody, somebody, somebody finally cares about me so much that they put me on their photos and they put me on their page." Like, right. okay, like, sir, you you need a hobby. Like, right. you need a pet. You yeah, need that's, something. That's, like, a guy, that's definitely a guy who lives in his mother's basement and doesn't have anything to do. Uh, it's that's always how it is. Uh -huh. Uh, but I was like tucked in the fat flats or something, so. <laughs> eating hot like, pockets and shit. Yeah, uh, but uh, I think you've made a. I think you made a really. I'm sure, yes, they are. Uh, they'll hopefully be a sponsor one day. Uh, <laughs> um, but I think you made a really good point about uh, consistency of, of rule enforcement. I, I think that a lot of people don't have an issue with the rules. I do personally. I think that all speech should be allowed, except for you know, in the case like with the Supreme Court, you can't yell fire in a crowded building. That's really the yeah. the extent of it. Um, but you know, I can see with what you're saying, like threats of violence obviously should not be allowed on there. Um, but I, th I think you're right in the consistency where they enforce it one time, but they won't enforce it another way. I know they talked about it with the election season. One political side was saying they were being censored. One was saying the opposite, you know, and, and it, there's just that inconsistency of rule for sure. So, uh, and then a lot of these are coming from anonymous accounts and, and people won't even put their face or name to it too. So uh in, in a way yeah it's it's a you're in a rock and a hard place a free speech absolutist that where there has to be some sort of of enforcement or, or a consistent enforcement so i think you're absolutely right there so yeah that that was my only the only thing with it like i 100 percent believe in free speech you know that's one of the basis that our our country was built on mm -hmm. but just just be consistent right that, that's all yeah, and, and that, yeah, and consistency would completely erase like any people's concerns about what's being said on the platform. Because if you're consistent, yep. then, then there's there's no well, he did this, but I did this. Why did he not get punished? There's always just one you know set rule. So yep, exactly.
All right, so let's talk about this weekend. Saturday, we have a UFC fight night. By the time this uh, podcast airs, they might have another main event switch. We're just going to talk about the main events. Uh, there you it go. Is, uh, Jack Hermanson will be taking on uh, Marvin Vittori. Now, let's go through the progression. It was originally Jack Hermanson versus Darren Till. Uh, Till uh, was actually injured. It had nothing to do with COVID. I believe he was just injured. Uh, so Kevin yeah. Holland had stepped in. And then Kevin Holland, I believe, had a, a COVID positive test either for himself or a corner man. So they moved his fight fight back, and they brought in Marvin Vittori. So he's he's settled on his third opponent. Um, so what do you think about this fight? You know, obviously Vittori was training for a fight to happen a couple weeks later. Does does the, uh, moving the fight up affect him? And then if you want to just break down how you see this fight going, please go ahead. Um, you know, it could affect him i i could definitely see that happening and if we're going with my personal opinion i hope it does because i want hermanson to win Mm -hmm. and i'm not a big uh vittori fan um my teammate teammate is carl roberson Uh, uh, at killer b and they uh had some issues put it that way (laughs) and Vittori himself, I, I don't know him personally. I've never met him, but I know several people who have met him, and it has not been a good experience. I don't think he's a good person. And the messages that his fans actually have sent to my coach personally and to to Carl, I've seen that stuff, and I'm uh, not a fan of the association with those people. And so, um, I mean, you take it as – that that's my personal part of the situation. I do think Hermanson's going to win no matter what. I think he's the better fighter personally, but I am just not a Vittori fan. Sorry. For sure. I'm and, not a fan. I don't really care. <laughs> yeah. Vittori's, um, his interactions with Carl, uh, was it having to do with Carl missing weight or he got pulled from the weight cut due to medical reasons? He got pulled from the weight cut due to medical reasons. He was going into to kidney failure. Okay. He was in, um, oh gosh, what's it called? He was in... Dialysis? I don't remember what the... My brain is like I know shot these days. Too much painkillers or <laughs> alcohol or the combination both. of both. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't do that. I don't do it. I don't either. <laughs> Just kidding. Um... But yeah, he was he was in kidney failure, and they forced him to, mm-hmm. and it's something that he had been dealing with for a while. And he, trust me, Carl's not the kind of person to just be like, "Oh, I just don't want to fight." No, he wants to fight. He mm-hmm. always wants to fight, and that was the first time that he had ever missed weight was for that first one where he got pulled and then wasn't able to, and then they it was just such a quick turnaround for them to try and reschedule that fight. His body didn't recover. It's like just bare. It's recovered now because it's been time, but it didn't. And so Vittori basically like waited in the hotel, waiting for him so he could like confront him, and said some some nasty stuff. And it's like, like I get it. Uh, like you're upset. You wanted to fight. I get it. But you know, it's not like he didn't want to fight. Right. He would have fought him if he could have. It was the UFC people and and everything that said absolutely not it can't happen so right and that was famously caught on camera at least a uh, part of the confrontation and i remember watching that and just being like oh that dude is on fire <laughs> you know yeah so. he, like he's a little angry possibly <laughs> he's he, an emotional he guy like he's italian cookie. yeah so. he's, he's italian exactly. he's an emotional guy you know <laughs> Uh, yes, now, in terms of how you see the fight going, obviously, I know you took uh, Hermanson here. Do you think Hermanson scores a finish? If so, by knockout or submission? Um, honestly, I think it's going to end up being a decision. Uh, Vittori is a good fighter. I'll give him that. Um, can't take away his, his skill from him. So I think he's going to be tough to actually get put away. I think it, I think it's going to be a good fight either mm-hmm. way. Um, but I I would say... I'm terrible betting, but if I was bet, I'd say it's going to be decision. So we'll see. I'd love to see him get knocked out or submitted, though. That would be great. I mean, it's possible. Jack Hermanson's got a pretty good track record of finishing top level guys in recent memory. So I mean, and, and you're right. Marvin's definitely very tough. Went to a split decision with Izzy Adesanya, uh, you know, before he was champion. So uh, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to take Hermanson here. Uh, knowing that he was getting ready for a fight on the exact date, whereas Vittori was, I believe, a week or two after this date he was supposed to take his fight. So he has to basically move up the weight cut. So 
Um, yeah, I, I agree with you. I have Hermanson. I will take a decision. I would say probably four rounds to one. If I, I believe it's still going to be a five round main event. So, oh yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you for coming on, Deanna. Uh, before I let you go, this is the part where I let everyone whore themselves out, including myself. Uh, where can we find you on social media? Anybody you want to give a shout out or thanks to? Uh, on social, I made it really easy on social media, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, the whole deal. It's Deanna D. Bennett. She's my, from a middle name, Deanna D. Bennett. Um, I post things from time to time. I'm not sure. Mostly dog pictures. Mostly dog pictures, most, and then fighting. I mean, my dog's cuter than me, so <laughs> it is what it is. So, but, um, yeah, that's all I got to say about that. Um, <laughs> please, could definitely use a follow. I'll try and be more interesting. I'm working on it. I posted my first ass photo today. So oh, that's wow. Yeah, I mean, it was just of my scar. So oh, it's okay. a fancy one. <laughs> as, uh, it's not one of those like, ooh, that's nice. And be like, actually, no, it's literally, it, it's my butt, but it's just because there's a scar underneath it. So <laughs> I don't think I'm doing that right. Um, I need to contact some of these Instagram people to see how gonna, I'm supposed to do that correctly. I was going to say, you get signed by Bellator and all of a sudden you're pulling a Valerie Lareda on us. Right, exactly. <laughs> like, signed by Bellator and now I'm showing my ass photos on Instagram. So. Well, they say that you change when you get to the top and don't do it, but I changed. It is what it is. As I sit here in my nerdy Star Wars shirt in my dirty car. If you wouldn't have said it, I wouldn't have even known what it was, so no worries there. Yeah. Well, if you were my people, you would know what it was. So the people that I associate with, they would know. But anyways, I look like a mess. Don't look at me. <laughs> well, that's what happens when we touch uh, you after physical therapy. I know. That's why I went to physical therapy. You're lucky. I didn't put my eyebrows on today or else I probably would have like lines across my face and it'd be even more of a mess because then who knows? Been there. But um, anyways, back to what we actually were talking about. These are the nerdy things that you would find on my Instagram. Dog photos, weird jokes. It's fine. Ask photos now. Looking for suggestions on how to improve those. Not sure I'll take them, but I will take your suggestions. Um, who I want to thank you for having me on. It's great to talk to somebody. You're helping me out with my not being able to talk to people. So, woo, perfect. Um, my coach has been amazing. Um, all my team, Jag One, my uh, physical therapy, getting me through this so that I could actually get back and fight with the people at Bellator who I, you know, was, wasn't the best showing for my first fight with Bellator, but the people there were amazing and I can't wait to, to get back there and to, to fight for them. Like that organization is what I've been wanting to fight for. Uh, and I'm excited that I get to now. So, um, I can't wait to get back into that cage and basically anyone and everyone that supports me. I know there's like a million people that I should probably say right now, but I just, my brain is just, I'm thinking about ass photos still. So that's that's where my brain stopped when I did that. So is that how it works? You start voting ass photos and then you just don't know what else to do. So pretty much. So. All right. Noted. Noted. I've changed. This is me now. So the new the new Deanna uh, Bennett. This is the new Deanna Bennett. So I mean my fight name is Vitamin D, so um if you really know who <laughs> we're just gonna we're not gonna go down that route. We're gonna throw <laughs> stuff in there. But especially if you knew what my actual first fight name was, which was just a joke, then yeah. It Anyways, had something to do with to it had something friend. to do with a nationality, if I'm not mistaken. So that was my actual real uh, one. Okay. Which is Garantine Assassin. But we're talking about the fake one that I got before that. That was so fun story. I'm gonna say this. And this is the <laughs> last story for the day. Perfect. So I didn't have a fight name yet. I had my very first pro fight coming up, and I was like, you know what? I'm bored. We're gonna go online. And I went to a. It was like a random fight name generator, like MMA fight name generator. Because I was like, all right, let's Google this. Let's see what okay. it says. So I go on there and I plug in my name, Deanna Bennett. Full circle as it's going, thinking, thinking, thinking. Boom! It pops up. And I remember I just looked at my computer and I was like, 
huh? Because it popped up, Deanna Blumpkin Bennett. I was like, <laughs> I think you should have kept it. <laughs> you know, I was like, eh, I well, and and my team, I was fighting for the pit elevated yep. in in Utah at the time, and like I remember, I went to the gym and I I told Ramsey Nijum that story, and so I. I legitimately, they called me Blumpkin for the longest time. And I was like, I was like, okay, I probably shouldn't have told people that, but it was one of those things where I'm like, how do I keep that to myself? Like yeah. I have to. And then <laughs> the showdown fights who I was fighting for, they're like, you realize that we can't actually put that on there. Right. right. And I was like, I didn't ask you to. And they're like, okay, we just wanted to make sure. So that was like my unofficial, but a kind of my first fight name. So that's Deanna Blumpkin Bennett. That's that is. I'm glad we ended on that story because that's fantastic. Well, you know, I try. So. Oh my god, that was funny. I mean, once you get to Blumpkin, that's the yeah. That's the, the final yeah. sentence, right? I was here. gonna say I didn't see that on uh, Sure Dog, so that's uh, that's a new <laughs> one for me. Yet. So before I <laughs> yet yeah, I'll have to I'll contact Keith Schillen. Uh, so before <laughs> I let you go, I will plug myself real quick. Head over to Combat Press. Loudmouth MMA uh, Podcast Network, MMA Intel, all those places. Uh, since you thank your physical therapist, I will say thank you to Illinois Bone and Joint Institute uh, for not only the surgery but the rehab. Uh, and, again, thank you for coming on the show because without fighters, we don't have this show. So uh, thanks again. Uh, so for Deanna Bennett, folks, my name is Riley Contact saying continue to watch the fights, continue watching the show. Go fuck yourselves. Good night. Good night.